We need to learn how to talk less and pray more you know why prayer works you know why prayer is powerful because it don't come from us god has given it to us and so there is power in prayer you don't pray out of your flesh you pray out of your spirit and i'm gonna do a teaching on that but we, when we see things going on, we love to tell a person, listen, I need you to do this. How many of you have told one of your loved ones over and over and over again, something that you don't like, something that you want them to start doing or stop doing, yet they still do it. And so now you're frustrated and you're just upset because they don't seem to get it. The issue is not with them. The issue is with you. The issue is with me because we're not using our influence. God has given us influence. It is prayer. And I'm going to tell you something, when it comes to marriages and when it comes to raising your children, prayer is the saving grace. You done said it one time. How many times do you have to say it for you to realize they're not receiving it? And so you're nagging and you are complaining and it seems that you're the only run frustrated and they go on about their lives. Y'all, I never forget a time. Oh my God, I will never forget it. It's funny now, but I was ready to fight then. I will never forget a time. And this was when my husband and I, we were dating. And I used to notice he used to get so scared if I was upset because he wanted to do everything right, okay? And so I remember I would say stuff or do whatever. And then, you know, he'll start acting right. Y'all know how we do. Don't, don't act like y'all don't know. We Y'all know what to do. And so if I was upset, I wanted him to be upset. You made me upset. Don't you walk around here like you don't realize you don't upset at me. And so when he would upset me, you know, I would, you know, be off to myself somewhere upset, sad, mad, whatever. And he would too. Now for a while, he'll kind of get over it. Well, at some point, y'all, there was a time where I was very upset. I was very upset. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, he in the other room, you know, because y'all know you go to another room when you're upset, right? Oh, he in the other room. He thinking about what he did. And all of a sudden, I got quiet. And y'all, I heard him playing the game. Then his cell phone rung and I heard him laughing. He was laughing with one of his homeboys and playing the game. And then I heard him say, I'll be over there in a little bit. So now I'm sitting here thinking that I'm mad. You made me mad, but you acting like I ain't mad in this room in here. You act like you done got over this. And what did it do? It created a monster. So now I got to go back and let him know. So you just don't care about me being mad. Y'all, why? Why do we do that? <laughs> why do we do that? See, that's why I love this group because I can just be comfortable and we can talk. That's what mentoring is. Just being who you are and talking and you gaining something from it. Listen. Stop nagging these men. Stop nagging your children. Stop keep stop telling your friend what she needs to do and what she don't need to do. Talk less, pray more. When you pray, you get God involved. Somebody put that in the comment section. When, make it personal. When I pray, I get God involved. And can I tell you something? Many of the issues that you are having in your home, in your circle, in your workplace, it is spiritual. It is not flesh. It is spiritual. How many times have you set out to say, okay, 
I'm going to have a different outlook about this. Um, and many of times, especially, I know for me, especially, okay, I'm going to add a few more, you know, minutes to my prayer, um, my prayer time. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to finish reading this book. I'm going to look at this in a positive light. And then the next thing you know, boom, here comes trouble. That is the enemy. And the Lord is allowing it. Let me tell you something. Nothing happens and God does not know it. God will allow the enemy to come at us because he knows, guess what? We will seek him. But can I tell you something? This is really, this is really real. Many of us would not have the, many of us would not have the enemy coming at us so often if we ourselves would stop giving him access to. We have open doors. We are distracted. We're not in our word. We're not praying and getting God involved. And so now we are distracted. We're not realizing that there is a real enemy out there and he will work through people. He will work through circumstances to get you off track. He will work through people. He will work through circumstances to try and steal your joy. He will work through people. He will work through circumstances to try to steal your peace. He will work through people. He will work through circumstances to try to steal your focus. He will work through people. He will work through circumstances to try and steal your purpose. He will work through people. He will work through circumstances to try and steal your very breath. The enemy's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. He does it mentally. He does it emotionally. He does it physically, our body, our health. He does it financially. He gets and messes with our money. He does it spiritually to try to move us away from God. He does all of these things, but the, the thing is, we are not doing what we should be doing. Pray and get God involved. Can I tell you something? What really led me to do this pour was because yesterday I was caught off guard with something. And so once I received the information that I received, I then went to the person and I began to give a whole rundown of what they should have done or shouldn't have done that would have stopped that very thing from happening. And I realized the first five minutes of it, guess what? They were receiving it, okay? But after the next five or 10 minutes of me still talking, they were, they was, you know, they was looking and acting like they was listening. But they were not hearing me. There's a difference between listening and hearing. They will not hear me. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what thus said the Lord. And as soon as I went in my room and shut my door, the first thing that the Lord told me was talk less, pray more. And immediately I remembered because I told God, God, when I get to a point where I am just trying to lay down the law, so to speak. When I feel like I have to just say something or express something for something to change, always remind me that this thing is spiritual, that I don't need to be talking to that person about it. I don't need to be talking to anybody else about it. I must first pray. Because nine times out of 10, it's spiritual. Can I tell you something? A lot of the issues you're going through now, 
you think you got something against somebody or y'all not getting along. You think things are going on at work and you don't understand why. You're thinking that there's there's people out to get you because that's going to be some of you who catch this replay. You may catch this replay eight months later. Maybe a new mentee that comes on and catch this replay eight months later. But these are type of messages that never expire. And you may think that it is people who is against you. You may think that it is that person who is upsetting you. That person that just don't understand. No, Again, remember, and type this in the comment section, the enemy works through people and circumstances. That's who he works through, people and circumstances. And it reminds me of a scripture, and I'm going to find that. That's in Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. And I'm going to read it and I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version, okay? It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh. See, you're not, you think it's that person. You think it's that situation. You think it's that circumstances. No. And many of you, you know this scripture, but you forget about it when there's trouble on the scene. Okay. I did yesterday. 12, I'm going to start over. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Verse 13, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. What is the whole armor? Well, when you read verses 14 down to 18, that tells you your armor. Listen, we're supposed to have that armor on all day. But I, there's so much great meat into this into this, this whole text where I could do at least 30 many uh, teachings on it. And I have at one point when I had my radio station. But listen, I want you to understand that what this scripture and what these series of texts is trying to let us know is you're upset with the wrong person. It's not your husband, sweetheart. It's not. It's not your boyfriend. It's not your fiance. It's not your child. No. It's not your co-worker. It's not your boss. It's not that your car is having problems. Maybe you tried to get in your car and it seemed like it wouldn't crank or something started to mess up. You know, I, I remember having a season where every, this was the year before last, where everything, every appliance in our house broke down. I'm talking about the stove the refrigerator and the dryer no it was the washing machine and the air conditioner now and we needed a new air conditioner and y'all know those things started about five thousand dollars ours was seven thousand but they all broke down at one time all of them broke down. These were not cheap appliances. They all broke down at one time. Here's the thing. And we didn't even purchase them all at one time either. One was fairly new. See, you would think that that's just, you know, something just to stress me out. That's just appliances breaking down. Let me tell you something. You might think I'm crazy, but this is the truth. Even in that, 
the enemy was using that because when those things start to break down, of, of course, my husband was like, hmm, I'm going to have to go in the savings and get ready to pay for this stuff. And it was something that he wanted to do. We had to spend like, let me see, about $16,000 up front right then for those appliances that broke down. And that was money that he had going to something else that he wanted to go to something else. So now y'all know when a man's money is looking funny, he really, he going to start acting funny. And everything was going so good. Hey, Jazz, everything was going so good. Everything was going good. And that thing set him back for a week or so. I'm telling you, the enemy will work through circumstance. I'm going to say it again. It's not your husband. It's not your fiance. It's not your boyfriend. It's not your children. It's not your co-worker. It's not your church members. Okay. Because let's throw them in there. It's not your church members. It's not your boss. Principalities principalities that's what it is principalities in verse 12 again it says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers and I want to read something in my notes here it says one of the church's greatest demands. And always remember, when I say church, I'm talking about people, the body, ecclesia, okay? Put my banners back up. It says, one of the church's greatest demands is to discern between spiritual struggle and other social, personal, and political difficulties. Otherwise, individual believers and groups become too easily detoured wrestling with human adversaries instead of prayerfully warring against the invisible works of hell behind the scenes. Heavenly places recalls earlier references. Listen what heavenly places means in, in that verse, okay? Number one spiritual resources available to the church. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Christ's authority over evil. Number three, the church is being seated together with her ascended Lord. Number four, the Father's will to display his wisdom through the church to the, to the confounding of evil powers. We have those things in heavenly places. That's why if we really understood the power that we held, we wouldn't fall prey to the enemy. And there are different ranks in the kingdom of darkness, just like there is different ranks in God's kingdom. There are different ranks, but can I tell you something? If you are putting on the whole armor of God, it tells you, you got to take your whole armor, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand, withstand what? These people and circumstances that the enemy will use to try to get you to be depressed, stressed, and discouraged. If the enemy can't kill you, he will definitely disrupt your peace. He will definitely distract you from purpose and for God's will for your life. He will stop at nothing 
He will stop at nothing until he's done his job. And the sad part about that, the enemy, and this is going to sound crazy, but the enemy does a great job at doing what he's here to do. He's here to steal, kill, and destroy. But oftentimes, we as believers, we don't work as hard as the enemy does. Mm -mm. We don't do our job like we should do. So we out here letting the enemy overwork us. We out here letting the enemy win. You know, people always say, oh, Lord, the devil is busy. Well, so is God. There is power in the name of Jesus. We got to learn how to call on Jesus. We got to learn how to be suited up. Can I tell you something? I truly believe when the Lord sees us suited up and we got our whole armor on, he looks and he looks and he said, oh, one of mine, boom, and knocks that devil dead on his back. But when we out here not suited up and we kind of looking like people who don't know the Lord, He coming. He'll come. But uh, it gets his attention when we are suited up for him. The Bible says that God looks to see who he can be faithful to. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 verse 2, I believe that blessings overtake us when we obey. Put in the comment section, I will obey. I will obey. Let me tell you something. Again, we got to get to the point where we are talking less and praying more. When there are situations that's coming up in your life, stop talking about it and get God involved. Pray. Put that in the comment section. Get God involved. Pray. That's what you have to do. Because a lot of times we use our own reasoning and we use our own wisdom and dealing with issues, but we don't even realize why the things are actually happening in the first place. We don't, we don't realize it. There may be a reason why this person is behaving this way. Or why this circumstance is happening. And it has to be because God wouldn't allow it if it wasn't. So we have to pray and get God involved and say, God, I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm getting you involved. And there's one last scripture I want to share. And I'm going to show you some books that I use and I'm going to get off of here. But Matthew 26, 40. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what could you not watch with me one hour? And then also I'm going to write this in right now. The next verse that I want you to look at is this right here. Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray. Lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We say that all the time. I said it yesterday. But God gave us the answer in that. So a lot of times we say it and we don't realize the answer is in what we're quoting. We've gotten so used to just using this, this, this Christian jargon and just saying these things that we have really took the influence and the power out of it. This is when he was in the garden and he was telling them, listen, I need you all to get up and pray. There's a message in that. Sometimes we are sleeping and we don't want to get up. We don't want to get up early and pray. We want to sleep, but let me tell you something. There are times when your sleep don't even matter. There, are, there have been times, y'all, when I have, guess what? Only got two hours of sleep because God had me up praying, just praying. 
And then later on, I will understand why I had to pray like that. In the days and times we're living in, we cannot afford not to meet with God. I understand there's going to be some times where you are just so sleepy and you are so tired. But one thing I noticed, and I, I knew this about myself. I never forget a time, and I've shared this before, but I never forget a time where I didn't feel too bad that I missed my prayer time. Like, you know, and I'm not trying to say make it legalistic either now, you know, just doing it like you're going to get some brownie points with God. No, but prayer is for you and it's to commune with him. Prayer is the only way we commune with God. Some of us have not talked to God in so long because we have not prayed. And I'm talking about really praying. I'm not talking about you got a whole prayer list. And you're saying, God, I want you to do bop, 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 bop. That's a part of prayer. But when's the last time you just talked to God and asked him how he was doing? When's the last time you just talked with God like I'm talking now? And said, God, you know, what, is there anything that I can do? You know how we check on our friends? You okay? You need something? Have you ever said to God, you okay, God, you need something? Y'all, I did that. It scared me so bad. I literally said, God, you okay? You need something? And God dropped in my spirit right then. Go visit so-and-so. I'm like, oh, Lord, now I wasn't trying to go nowhere today. I'm off today. But when I got over to this girl's house, the things that she was into, I truly believe that if I did not go to her house, she would not be here today. Can I tell you something that's even more surprising? I didn't even know her like that. I didn't even know her like that. Never been over a house, never had a full conversation, just saw her in Walmart. It was a hey and bye. And I knew where she stayed because she loved to do a lot of yard work and I would see her outside. So when I say, hey, God, you need anything? He said, yeah, go to so-and-so house. I'm like, well, what I'm going to do when I get over there? Go to the house. That's another thing. So many times we want God to tell us to tell God, show me this, 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 this. Sometimes you don't get the instruction until you move. You got to move as you go. I will show you as you go. Then you'll know. Put that in the comment section. As you go, then you'll know. See, we want to know the whole thing before we move. And that was me for many years. That's why I missed out on so many opportunities because I needed to know all of what I needed to know before I would go. And I missed out on so many opportunities because I had a need to know. God calls the shots, not us. But in verse 41, it says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing. Guess what? Temptation is going to come. The sin is not in being tempted. It is in what you allow that temptation to do. What's going to stop us from falling into the temptation? And every time we hear temptation, we always, our mind always goes left. Temptation can be eating something that you said you didn't want to eat anymore. Maybe you're trying to cut pork out your life, okay? It can be, I'm not going to spend money like I said. I'm not going to, I'm going to budget this time. Then you see something, you're going on Amazon. Me. You're going on Amazon and that, all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. And you got it over there in your cart. You ain't hit it yet. Then you go ahead and pay for it and hide it. So your husband wants, okay, let me stop. Maybe that's just my life. But still, okay, <laughs> you got to pray about everything. You got to watch and pray. The enemy is clever. He is very clever. Very clever. You got to watch and you got to pray. And I'm getting ready to end by sharing this with you. One of the things that I really want you to get from this, this poor this morning is when there's trouble that come up, when there's trouble that comes up, I, it's okay to have a discussion with a person and all of that. 
it's okay. You're going to have your moments where you're frustrated and you're tired and you know you, you want to go off or you want to go into your little corner and cry and all of that. But let's work on praying. Let's pray. Because when you pray, you get God involved. Stop nagging those children. Stop nagging your mate. Stop being upset with the boss. Stop being upset with your friends. Listen, this thing is spiritual. It's not physical. This is spiritual. You cannot come to a gunfight with a knife. You can't do it. God has given us the power to overcome the enemy. Watch and pray. Stop going and calling everybody. What you think? What you think? Get somewhere and pray. Let me share some resources. And I'll be sharing a lot of stuff that I do. Let me share a few books. And I left one. But this book here, The Power of a Praying Woman. And I'm telling you, this is such a great book. And it's it's have uh it has 30. Most of her books is gonna have 30 chapters. And um, the first one, Lord, draw me into a closer walk with you. Number two, Lord, cleanse me and make my heart right before you. Chapter three, Lord, help me to be a forgiving person. Mm. Number four, Lord, teach me to walk in obedience to your ways. What she do is she will explain um, those things that she's talking about. She will explain, she will give examples of what she's done, things that happened in her life. And then she will always have a prayer. And y'all, my book is falling apart because I have been reading this book, but she will give a prayer. Okay. Since the page falling out, I'll show you, but see this, she will give a prayer that you can pray yourself. You can pray, you know, the exact words, or you can kind of use these words and go off on your own. But these are some, uh, and her name is Stormy O'Martian. I used to think it was O'Martian, but it's Stormy O'Martian. She has so many great books on prayers, but this helps you. If you're dealing with unforgiveness, you can get in this book. You can go to it and say, I'm dealing with unforgiveness. Let's, let me go and see what she says. She will tell you about it. She will instruct you on how to do it. And then she will give you a prayer. This is also, y'all, this was a great book for me, especially when my children were younger. Um, and I do have one that's 17, so I'm still using this one for her. But The Power of a Praying Parent. Oh, my God. It is such a great book. Um, the first chapter, Becoming a Praying Parent, because you have to pray. You Let me tell you. You don't pray for your children. You are leaving them uncovered. And I ain't always prayed for mine. I'm just being honest. And there were things that happened because guess what? I would talk and I would, you know, set punishments and you, you won't punish me. You can't do this. You can't do that. Then I talk. You don't supposed to do this. You know, I told you not to do this. I talk more than I pray. But if I had a prayed and covered them, I probably could have prevented some of the things that were happening. Um, securing protection from harm, feeling love and accepted. It teaches you how to pray that your child feels love and accepted. Can I tell you something? All of my children have dealt with wondering and having issues of being loved and accepted by the world. And I used to, you know, I remember as a, a young girl dealing with the same thing. And my parents would say, I love you. I love you. But you get to a point, a child gets to a point where you feel you got to love me because you're my mama, you're my daddy. But I'm trying to find my place in this world. And so, and church, I'm telling you, y'all, they suffer with more than you know. If I could tell y'all some of the conversations that I have had with some of these children, maybe even some of yours, they are going through. And we need to pray. We're talking to them and we're fussing at them and we're scolding them, but we're not praying. Talk less, 
pray more. Pray, get God involved. The things that they are doing, guess what? It ain't them. It's them dark powers working in them to influence them. Listen at the music that they listen to. Look at the examples they have as, as being a stand-up guy or woman. They don't have great examples. And they look at it. They get on Instagram. They look at all these people. And they feel like they're missing out on something. And you're fussing at them. And, and listen, telling them to get off Instagram, get off on Facebook, well, they usually don't be on Facebook, but get off Snapchat. You know what? That ain't going to work because it's something deeper on the inside of them that's going on. Talk less, pray more, get God involved. God, what's really going on with my child? God, how can I parent my child? I've had to do that and recently, as recent as yesterday. Oh, and this one here. Now, let me go ahead and give a disclaimer. A disclaimer. Can't say that right. If you can get past the first chapter, you can do any of it. Because the first chapter just really just embarrass all of us. All of our, all of us, all of us who are married. This, but this book, I'm telling you, this book has saved my marriage so many times. So many times. This book, oh my goodness. This I this probably my second book because I know this is my third one because I would be in it and just like where is it the power of a praying woman where all of these pages look y'all the pages are coming out but I this 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 one here I have to use okay but the power of a praying wife you don't have this book go get it go get it okay go get it. And someone actually gifted this book to me before I got married. They uh, at my bridal shower, they said, "Get this." And I looked at all this stuff. Oh, I don't nobody need this. And I was, and at that time, I hadn't given my life to Christ either. And I was looking at all that. I'm like, "Child, I don't need none of this." That's how I was saying to myself. I was acting like I was so appreciative of you, but I'm like, "I don't need none of this." Cause I mean, I'm a marriage is gonna be fine. And number one, he don't cheat on me. Well, number two, he don't be out there making me look crazy. Number three, he don't bring me then home. Number four, he do what I say do and we good. And I know y'all might be like, shocker for real. I was 23. That I mean, that's that's how it was. We getting ready to celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary. But let me tell you something. It's been a journey, but I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Because let me tell you something. This book right here has saved whew, it has saved me. It talks about his work, his finances, his sexuality, his affection, his temptations. Let me tell you something. That men are faced with so many temptations and we'll get mad if we see them looking at somebody else or whatever. And we'll be talking about don't have me out here looking crazy. You shouldn't do this and feel some type of way. Hush. Talk less. Pray more. Get in this book. Get in this book. Matter of fact. Let's see. His marriage. Let's go to that. Page 153. I promise y'all these pores will not be this long, but you know, I got a little extra time this morning, which is now afternoon. Let me just read a little bit of the prayer. Right here, she talks about, you know, the different things that happens in a marriage. And the prayer goes a little like this. Lord, I pray you protect our marriage from anything that will harm or destroy it. Shield it from our own selfishness and neglect, from the evil plans and desires of others, and from unhealthy or dangerous situations. May there be no thoughts of divorce or infidelity in our hearts and none in our future. Set us free from past hurts, memories, and ties from previous relationships and unrealistic expectations of another. Can I tell you something? And we're going to have a whole mentoring session about marriage too. But that's really what causes many marital issues and divorces. Unrealistic expect expectations of each other. But anyway, 
I pray that there be no jealousy in either of us or the low self-esteem that precedes that. Let nothing come into our hearts and habits that will threaten the marriage in any way, especially influences like alcohol, drugs, gambling, pornography, lust, or obsessions. Unite us, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but see, it's that. And there may some of you that there may be some of you that will watch this replay and you may say, well, I'm already dealing with that too late. No, it's not. Pray, get God involved. Start praying the prayer and there's a possibility. Guess what? That if they're doing it now that they may stop. Your nagging is not going to change it. You getting mad and withholding your medicine. And those of you that will be new ain't following me. Medicine is your intimacy. But you withholding your medicine, you getting upset, you and your silent treatments, it's not helping. As a matter of fact, it's harming. It's causing more harm. Stop that. Pray. Get God involved. And then there may be some of you that say, I'm tired of praying. I, 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 I really don't care. Most people that say that, I'm going to say something. It's going to be a little hard. Most people that say that, number one, you probably, you got so many problems because you probably ignored the red flags when God and everybody else tried to tell you in the first place, this ain't the one. But out of your desperation, you are now experiencing the fruit, the fruit of devastation because you would not wait. And number two, those that say that you don't realize that you are contributing to the issue as well, which I have this book here. The Power of a Praying Husband. I got this book and I told my husband, look, I want you to read this because I know you're not always the problem. You need to pray for me because I know I can be a handful. In, in the man's book, the, um, where is it? Okay. It has all the listings here. Her husband, her spirit, her emotions, her motherhood, her moods. My goodness. So there are so many resources in the book that I left on the inside of the house because I had to read a chapter out of it yesterday. Was the power. No, wait. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on. The power of praying for your young adult children. Okay, something like that. I might be saying it wrong. Let me look it up because I want to say it right. Because there are some of you who watch this and you have um, older children. Let me see. Let me look real quick because I want to give y'all all the research, resources. The power for the power of praying for your adult children. And that's still by Stormy O'Martian. Y'all, that is the best book because when our children become adults, we definitely need to know how to fall back. We need to know how to fall back. You really got to get to a point where you talk less and you pray more because they have reached this part in their lives where they are saying, thank you, mama, but I got this. You know how I know it. I'm like that now. And you be wanting to tell your parent, didn't my hair? Do this the way I want to do it. You did this when I was, okay, maybe it's just me. But still, we got to stop all the complaining, the nagging, getting upset, and we need to talk less and pray more. Get God involved. And remember, as I log out, what you see the circumstances, the people that you're butting heads against, it's not them. It's these powers, these dark powers. It's the enemy using, he's sending his imps. He's using these demons and these demonic spirits to work. Can I tell you something? A lot of times the enemy will work through people and they don't even realize they're being used by the enemy. They don't. If you don't believe me, many of us are being used by God and we don't realize it. There have been times where I was just having a general conversation and a person will just burst out and start crying. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? 
And they like, you don't know how much this blessed me. I was going through this. Oh my God, thank you. You just gave me the answer. I didn't know I was being used by God. I thought I was just having a general conversation. So just like in there are times that you can say things and you can bless some people. And then there's times you can say things and you can stress on people because you don't realize you are allowing the enemy to use you. And if you're broke down, busting and disgusted, you're feeling down in the dumps, you're depressed, you're stressed, you're mad, you're upset, you're jealous, you're angry, you're grieving, you're sad. Those are the times when the enemy uses you the most. Let me tell you, come over on the right side. Talk less. Pray more. Get God involved and you'll start to see your house changing. The things in your house, the people in your house, you will start to see things changing. You will start to gain your, your joy back. You will start to walk different. You will even begin to look different because you recognize a power that many people forget. A power that many people don't access because the only time they want to access it is with, when they want God to be their butler. Two, guess what? Give them what they need. But if you would just pray and talk to God because he is God and spend time with him, let me tell you something. You will be in such a great place in your life. 